you've mentioned confidentiality and privacy that you don't, the parties don't need to necessarily know private data in this interaction. You talk about confidentiality in the, in the white paper for Chainlink 2.0. Can you talk more about how to uh, achieve confidentiality in this process? Sure, sure, ab ab absolutely. Um, so I think you once again need to think of the contract as existing in two parts, right? You have the on-chain code, and then you have this off-chain system called a decentralized Oracle network. Mm -hmm. So the question is really, what portion of the contract should live in what part of these two systems, right? So if you want to create transparency, you should put more information on chain, because that's what blockchains are very good at. They're public, transparent, but they don't necessarily have privacy. Well, those you can see how those two things are a little bit kind yeah. of um, completely uh, <laughs> diametrically opposed, right? Yes. So I, I do I do think and I do see blockchains working um, on on-chain encrypted smart contracts. That's very inefficient. It has a lot of um, nuances around it. Th that I think will appear at some point. I think until it appears, you have an option of taking a part of the computation and putting it into the centralized Oracle network. Mm -hmm. we, we actually did an entire paper about this that we presented at Stanford um, in February of last year, mm -hmm. uh, something called Mixicals, which basically talks about how you can take an Oracle network and you can put a portion of the computation into the Oracle network, assuming that you're comfortable with that limited set of nodes knowing what the computation is, and you can actually provide additional confidentiality through special hardware called trusted execution environments that you that all those nodes are forced to run so they won't even know what they're operating. Mm. And so at, at the end of the day, if you look at a hybrid smart contract as gaining functionality from its on-chain code and gaining other functionality from its off-chain decentralized uh, Oracle network component, you can place the part of the computation that you would like to be private in the decentralized Oracle network because you can control the set of nodes, you can control the committee of nodes, and you can require that they run certain hardware to keep the information private, right? So you could basically make a derivative that, um, or a binary option is the example used in, in the Mixicals paper, where the payout happened on chain, but it was actually impossible to tell what the outcome of the contract was. Mm -hmm. So the, the outcome of the contract was computed in the centralized Oracle network, and then there was a switch that that triggered who received the payment, but from who, who from from the point of view of analyzing the on-chain transactions and seeing um, who received the payment or or what the outcome of the contract was, you couldn't you 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 couldn't derive that you couldn't backward engineer what that was. Mm -hmm. But the users of that hybrid smart contract still had on-chain code that guaranteed them that as long as the decentralized Oracle network found a certain outcome, right? Determined a certain outcome that the relevant user would get paid and there was still a place to put value, mm -hmm. right? So there, there, there is this kind of fundamental tension between um, confidentiality, privacy, which is very important for many contracts, which is critical mm -hmm. to many contracts, and the public and transparent nature of blockchains, which I think eventually will be solved through encrypted on-chain smart contracts That'll take some time. I think that'll take years, in my opinion. And before we arrive there, I think people will put the private portion into the centralized Oracle network. Once again, going back to what the decentralized Oracle networks do, they seek to provide these services, right? So the ability to do a privacy-preserving computation mm -hmm. is perhaps a service without which a certain type of contract might never come into existence in the form of an on-chain hybrid smart contract. And so this is once again what we see decentralized Oracle networks and decentralized services doing is providing people these tools and building blocks to compose, you know, like I'm I'm great at making these derivatives contracts, but I can't make them until, unless I can retain the privacy of them. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to provide the infrastructure that gives you as a developer and as a creator of smart contracts that capability and what we've seen is that as we provide that capability, people create more, which is also really the story of the internet, right? The story of the internet is it was really tough to do e-commerce while everything was an HTTP and credit cards were transmitted publicly. 
And so e-commerce was kind of tough because how am I going to send my credit card over public unencrypted channels, right? But the second HTTPS appears, e-commerce becomes a lot easier because I can put in my credit card number and it can be sent over an encrypted channel and, you know, it's not at risk. And so I can participate in e-commerce as long as I have a credit card. I, I think those types, and, and, and I'm sure that was unexpected, right? I'm sure at the time that was an un, unexpected outcome from, from that technology. And so I think this is why um, we sometimes have this focus on privacy, because in our work with contracts and their transition into this hybrid smart contract form, we see a substantial amount of need for privacy as, as an inherent property of, of these contracts. And it'll take a while before that's possible to create the kind of technology innovation required to do that on chain. I know there's a few ideas that are being floating about, but so the currently distributed Oracle networks provide that feature. The, which is essential to many contracts. What, what brings to mind in this whole space, again, it might be outside of your expertise, but within the world, which I'm passionate about, which is machine learning. And it seems like very naturally, because current machine learning systems are very data hungry and much of the value mined by companies in the digital space are from data, they often want their data to maintain privacy. So you think about an autonomous vehicle space, uh, Tesla is collecting a huge amount of data, Waymo is collecting a huge amount of data. It seems like it would be very beneficial to form contracts where one could use the data from the other in some kind of privacy preserving way, but also where all the uses of data are codified and you can exchange value cleanly, you know, basically, contracts over data, over um, machine learning systems use of different data. I don't know, do you uh, do you talk to machine learning folks that you use ideas of smart contracts or is that from outside your interest? Because it seems like exceptionally applicable set of, when we talk about different services that might be created and revolutionized by smart, especially hybrid smart contracts, I think machine learning systems comes to mind to me in all industries. I, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to interact with those folks, with those so services. I, I, I think I think what you're talking about is more data marketplaces in in the data marketplace side of things. Um, well, it, it, this is actually once again very applicable because there's a, a trust issue. Um, right. At the end of the day, let's say I'm trying to sell you some data. You um, don't know the quality of the data, so you don't know what you want to pay for it. And I can't give you the data for you to determine the quality because I've given you the data, mm -hmm. right? Guess what? We need an autonomous, impartial agent. We need an impartial, uh, computational kind of agent, an on-chain uh, smart contract with an Oracle network to assess my data, to, right, to, to, to basically take random cross-section samples of the data, assess it for quality, assess it for signal from the algorithm you have, which you don't want to share with me because you don't want to know the algorithm you're working on, right? Mm -hmm. you, you don't want me to know what you want the data for. Mm -hmm. So now the autonomous agent takes your algorithm, keeping it private from me, and takes my data, keeping it private from you, assesses it on a random cross-section sampling for quality of data, returns the scoring back to you, allows you to determine a price, and now, you, and now both you and me know that we've arrived at a fair price for the quality of my data for what you want to do with it. And um, that's once again, it, from what I've seen in the in the data marketplaces, which are full of people who want that data for these learning models, often for financial markets, often for, 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 for other reasons, this is their fundamental problem, which amazingly enough, there's <laughs> a trust issue that is, is, is getting solved. And uh, I think you can see even on the face of it, once that trust issue is solved, uh, those markets can work a lot better, right? I don't need to know your algorithm. You don't need to know my data. We both know that the autonomous agent is not under either of our control and gave us a fair assessment and a fair price. And uh, and that's it. And we're all very comfortable with um, with that. We we I could even make conditions that your algorithm isn't analyzing the data for something I don't want you to analyze it for, or you could make conditions that the data has to have you know any number of properties. And and once again, you haven't leaked any signal to me, and I haven't leaked any any data to you, which is once again just another type of trust issue that that all of this solves. So it's 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 the same pattern 
if you work in this industry long enough, or if you really look at these use cases long enough, you'll simply come to the question, and this is the useful question, um, what is the trust issue this is solving? <laughs> and then if you can get an answer to that question on a case-by-case -case basis, that's when you'll understand why blockchains are relevant. And then once you do that with enough use cases, it becomes, um, you know, it becomes a little bit mind-blowing.